Last week when I raked the garden bed, I took the chunky stuff out in buckets and put it on the inside at the bottom of this raised bed where there were gaps. And then at the end here where there was a larger gap, I filled it with a layer of rocks. I just screwed a couple of two by fours to the center of this new raised bed so that I can get some soil in here right now. Later on, I'll get a couple of metal rods and put that through there to hold it together. I came down in the morning to find these birds scratching away in the beds that I had direct seeded last week. These are arugula sprouts strewn over the top of this bed. They would have been the first to germinate of all the seeds that I planted, and there aren't any other sprouts on the top of any of the other beds. I would have thought this was insect damage or something if I hadn't seen those birds chomping on the tops of the sure snap peas here. The birds are really bold and probably really hungry, so I was able to get a really good close look at their feathers and the stripe across the top of their head. Hey, so I just covered everything out here with Agrabon row cover, even the sugar snap peas. I don't know if they also just eat seed and like they just ate up all my seed that was out there, but on the off chance that like say the pelleted carrots didn't get eaten or maybe some of the stuff just got disturbed, I figure I'm just going to cover them up and see if something germinates. I got a little bit of time in digging the dirt out of the raised bed in the greenhouse and moving it out with a wheelbarrow to the new raised bed out in the garden where the greenhouse is going to get moved after fighting the birds in the morning. I am loading up on dandelion greens which are growing out here nice and big on Shakes Island. There's the Alliance Harbor right in town. The mountain scared by the fog. The totems that have been pulled down and stored for repair. And the Shakes Island Tribal House. And we are on the other side, the east side of Shakes Island, and this is the inner harbor where Tyler and I used to live on our boat. These rods that um, are going through the um, raised bed here, uh, there's just a nut on the outside. Yeah, washer and this, and same thing on the other side, and then this thing out. I just finished putting a layer of rotted seaweed onto the raised bed on top of the soil and I was going to take the rods from that raised bed in the greenhouse and just jam them through here. I even drilled the holes but I realized oh yeah that raised bed is wider than this one. I wanted this one to be a standard 30 inches. So I'm going to have to wait for Tyler to either like shorten those and put some threads on them or get me a couple new ones. Next thing I'm going to um, dig some more of the soil out of the raised bed in the greenhouse and put it on top of this seaweed. So the plan is that the basil will have its feet down in the seaweed and I will have a nice uh, workable layer of soil on top for when I'm weeding around the small basils until they get big enough to kind of make a canopy but this is an experiment I don't know if they're the basil's gonna like this rotted seaweed crap right at their toes hey so uh, it's supposed to get sunny today and get into the 60s which will be the first time we've hit the 60s um, so far uh, this year and uh, so that uh, that machine shop fellow is awfully good um, he chopped down these rods so that they're the right um, length here for the width of the raised bed and gave me some new threads. And so we're just gonna go ahead and jam these things in here. I've got this other one started on the other side. I'll just do this. Oh. 
So that, uh, those birds that I saw in the garden the other day, I looked them up, and uh, fortunately they were brave enough that they got close so I could actually identify them. You know, so I, I looked up white crown sparrows, and um, then I was looking closer, and I think their heads might have been yellow, so they might be yellow crown sparrows, but same diff, right? And um, so, because what I uh, what I found was that they cause terrible destruction in gardens, and lettuce. And, um, in particular, I think in California where they were talking about lettuce um, fields, they just wreck them. And um, so, yeah, and so then I was looking to see, well, when are they in Wrangell? And I found a bird, um, whatever you call it, like a survey or whatever. And it, was, it just happened to be all the way back in 2009. And they said that the white crowned sparrows aren't, you know, are kind of somewhat rare in Wrangell, although that could have changed in the last 10 years, and that you more often see the yellow crowned sparrows. And um, in that survey, they happen to have had a cold, uh, you know, kind of a cold spring, and so they said that they weren't seeing some migrating birds, and some of them were coming later. So, yeah, it's not like the birds are like, oh, okay, May 1st, you know, we gotta be, it's, it's such and such place, you know. I'm sure that the weather and whatever else, temperature affects them, their migration. So anyway, so yeah, they were here maybe a little bit later than they would normally be. And they ate a bunch of my garden. But if I get a greenhouse, that's another problem that might be solved. Okay, so we got these little buddies in here. Hopefully, <laughs> everything's good. So I'm gonna start filling the dirt in. First of all, I gotta take these boards off. Oh, shoot. <gasps> Let's not put the screws in deeper, right? Oh my gosh. I'll never get that one out of there, eh? Right. So, yeah, and then I saw this fly the other day sitting on the potato boxes. And uh, it doesn't look like a normal house fly. It looks an awful lot like some sort of root maggot fly, whether it's a, you know, one that likes the brassicas or one that likes onions. Like the other day, when, last week when I was doing my video, I was like, no, no pests eat onions, right? And then they're like, oh, you know, the onion maggot fly. about a greenhouse and the problems it might solve. The problems would have with a, a big greenhouse is just vent, you know, ventilation, like if it gets too hot, like it did in March. I just want to get that freaking screw out, but it's not going to come out. Okay. No, it's not going to come out. I don't want to deal with it. Deal with you guys later. Yeah, so I just have to have proper ventilation and insect screening. And it would be a whole lot easier to probably screen a greenhouse and ventilate a greenhouse than it would be like have tons of insect row cover out in the main garden. But once my garden's really big, you know, only a portion of it's going to be under a greenhouse. So I will have to have some sort of insect netting deal going on. Whatever. Think, think, think. Okay, next. Dirt to fill these, these gaps here. Well, there's the sun. So I'm breaking up this um, rotted seaweed so that hopefully the roots of the basil won't get like stuck in clumps instead. Um, so talking about pests, I looked at the University of Alaska Fairbanks um, agricultural extension information about pests and they were saying, you know, um, besides the root maggot, uh, another problem is what they said was cutworms, but I think what I saw last year, especially in eating holes in my chard, was it looked like an army worm, but I don't know. I'll have to get a better identification. And um, and then they also talk about slugs, which can be really just so destructive. Those little invasive um, brown slugs, not like the banana slugs, which 
don't really, I don't know, I haven't had any problem with those. But this year I have not seen one slug um, in on our property. But, uh, you know, it's funny how they didn't even really talk about birds that I noticed. Which, boy, those guys can cause some distraction. Got uh, the seaweed covered. Everything's a layer of dirt on the top of this raised bed here. And that is ready for the greenhouse to get moved and go on top. But I've got to pull everything out of this greenhouse so we can move it more easily. All this stuff. A little bit of material left in this raised bed. It's mostly sand. That's what I put down first when I did this. And then we've got our first succession of basil. The three flats are still going. Some of these are ready to get planted out. And then others are just still germinating, if you can believe it. It is 5.30 in the afternoon and I have taken down the black mesh fencing from around this raised bed out here and also the kale that was under that agrobon row cover and I've pulled it over across here so that the greenhouse will just stand alone by itself out there. And let's go inside the fence and look at the garden. This is that first succession of kale. These were the ones that were too small last week. And then this is that second succession of kale. And this is the golden chive of my garden for some reason this year. Salanova lettuce. And then no Italian parsley. And no curly parsley yet. So let's take a look at the 30 inch by 30 inch trial plots that I did weeks ago. Coming along so slowly. This is the radish, and so you can see it's only just for getting its first leaves. But this is interesting. This is the little bed of radish that I seeded last week that the birds were into, and they're coming up. It'll be interesting to see if they just catch up with those earlier seeded radishes. This is the trial plot of arugula growing really slow. And then this bed that the birds were in, I think it got hit pretty bad. I've got some coming up, but it's really pretty spotty. So we'll see how bad they, how bad they did. And then the trial plot of spinach. This is really spotty growth. Like some are big and some are small. It's pretty strange, but I'm really excited because the birds were in this bed. They're coming up guys. So, Either I might have caught those birds just as they were coming in, maybe. Looks like I might have some spinach that's going to make it. And then we've got the tripod plot of carrots. Oh, super slow growth. Super slow. And they germinated slow. Um, so uh, this trial, this uh, second succession that I did last week is going to take a while to come up but it's interesting how for the first time living right next to my garden you know you see things like birds chewing on your stuff um sugar snap peas they were just chewing on the tops so these are going to recover and that spotty growth here by the fence that's the super sugar snap pea which it just didn't germinate as well or maybe a critter got to it being close to the fence but um, the sugar ann right here uh, definitely did better. And let's take a look at the green onions. I just threw that row cover over them because I was like, oh my gosh, the birds are eating everything. So their tops are kind of smashed. I'll have to do something different a little bit later on when I get a chance. The kale that I transplanted out last week is doing fine. First succession of lettuce. Man, this stuff is so amazing. The Salanova lettuce. They're just all doing really great. And for some reason, the birds just left it alone. Thank goodness. Gosh, you know, and last but not least, out here in the garden, we've got the potatoes coming up. It's got purple leaves. I'm like, what's wrong? Well, it's because it's a purple potato. 
So we'll see how those guys do. And then today, because it was sunny for the first time in a while, I put the basil out in the greenhouse, that first succession. And we'll go up to the house and take a look at the, the other plants. And in the house, under the grow lights, for the first time, I've got the second succession of basil because it was starting to get a little leggy as after it had germinated. And then the three different types of cilantro, nothing up yet. One sunflower seed. He needs to go out in his own pot soon. And then, oh no, oh no, the dill, oh no. And the green onion's looking nicely. And the wild plants down in the swamp, the Pacific Northwest tulip, otherwise known as skunk cabbage.